What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the My Parents Office podcast. I am your host, Andrew Diaz. Uh, today we got episode 111. I'm going to be riding solo for it today uh, just because people are busy. Uh, it's been, like I've mentioned in previous episodes, it's been uh, somewhat tough to get guests on, especially kids that I go to school with now because they're always doing stuff. We're all super busy and I want to have a lot of my teammates on, but we're busy with practice, classes, all types of stuff like that. Um, but down the road, hopefully as the semester progresses a little bit more into October, into November, then we'll, uh, we'll have more guests on and figure it out week by week uh, today. Uh, I don't have too much. I'm going to kind of go over my gambling picks for the past week and then the picks I also uh, I'm going to ride with for this upcoming Saturday. Uh, I'm going to go with four again because I had a real good week this past week. Also, new Spose album coming out um, October 20th. So I'm beyond fired up for that. I'm going to try to get Spose back on the show. Um, maybe when the album comes out or pre-tape something so we can talk about the album. Um, but just, just I definitely want to want to get in his ear and see uh, wh- how the album process has been going because he's dropped uh, four song or not four, I think more than four. Um, so the new album's called Get Rich or Die Ryan. Um, also, if, if it's a little echoey, it's um, the person in the dorm room next to me, he's off four bar. Uh, he moved out yesterday. I've seen him around campus, so I don't know where he's living now. So I've kind of just taken this dorm room over um, as where I'm going to record until they throw somebody in here. So it is a little bit uh, more echoey because there's less, there's pretty much nothing. I'll give you a little, show you around a little bit right in here. Literally nothing. Both wall lockers empty, uh, both beds empty. Um, yeah, pretty odd. But so suppose it's dropped. One, two, three, four, five. He's dropped six songs um, off of the album so far. He dropped the very first track, Self Destruct, with Dominic Lavoy, which was really good. It's a very soft song, kind of has a quieter tone to it. And you can really see where the divide is um, with the double sided album because a song, the first three songs he dropped from the first half of the album are Self Destruct, Sieve, or C- CV and Hey Big Guy, which are all softer songs. And I, I'm actually writing an article now about Hey Big Guy for one of the Spose Saturdays coming up. Um, so I think that's probably my new favorite song or most meaningful song that I enjoy by him. Um, I think my new favorite is on the second half of this album, but Hey Big Guy, just like, I wrote a little bit because I'm doing the Alt Rock Autumn. I'll go over that too. Um, but I wrote an article about uh, the song Everclear and or about the song Father of Mine by Everclear and how I kind of get emotional when I hear that just because I think of like spending time with my dad and this song is a pretty much a letter from Spose to his uh, son about how he loves him unconditionally. He'll support him through everything. And that th- th- this song, when I first heard it, really, you get the waterworks going. But so you see kind of the divide where this is more of like a soft rock side of the album But then again, there's songs on here where it makes me think that it's not really going to be a soft rock because he has Alien with Crucify Aiden, which already dropped, and Self Help, which are very punk rock songs. It's like hardcore metal, but like with rap over it. So I think this will be the rap side. And the the hip hop side has uh, the songs that have dropped already are Metal Band with Jarv, which that's the one. That's my new favorite song. I love it. Um, Hypocrite and Close to Me with Jeff Beam. Um, and then other ones that have been released, I think it's just Parasite, which is weird that it, that one's not on the first half if it's going to be like a rock and a hip hop because Parasite's kind of got a softer um, softer rock feel. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of a sad song. It's a um, really good one, but that one came out already. So in total, there's uh, one, two... Three. So the six that he released on the album, along with Self Help, uh, Alien, and Parasite. So nine total songs are out from the album. <clears throat> um, a lot of them came out in their own single form. And I think that's another cool thing that Spose did is he made, actually, they're not singles, they're like dual, dual albums. Um, so like the one with Metal Band in Sevi or Sievi, I don't know if I'm even saying that right. 
that one was uh, had its own album cover. It's Spose and Jar standing with the devil behind them. Um, and then the one for Hypocrite and Hate Big Guy is Spose just like sitting in a chair on his phone. It says Hypocrite right above it. So I think that's a really cool thing that he's doing. The marketing for it is just unreal. Um, and I'm excited to get my, I've been talking about it. I bought it back in August, uh, late August during uh, football camp. I got the uh, CD, the matching, the guessing game, and uh, the action figure. So I'm fired up for those to come in when they do. But that al- album drops October 20th. Stay tuned. I'm going to try to get Spose on. Maybe I'm going to think I'm going to reach out to Jarv as well because uh, Jarv dropped a song recently. Kind of around the same time his came out with uh, Spose. Um, uh, he dropped two, or no, actually, this is an older one. Um, this came out a year ago. I, I think I just found it. That's probably why. He's got a song with the Palmer Squares called Too Slow that I'm a real big fan of. Um, and I'm seeing both the Palmer Squares and Spose in concert. Um, ooh, let me check my calendar, see how this lines up. Huh. Because this could be a very, very awesome show. Like, I'm excited for the show in general, but if the way this is working out. So, oh my God. So the album drops October 20th. I'm seeing, which is a Wednesday, and then I'm seeing Spose and the Humans with the Palmer Squares and Jarve at, uh, in Cambridge at the Sonia, um, October 21st, the day after. So it's going to be an awesome concert. He played uh, Bangor recently, um, which, which he uh, um, he released the set list. I don't know if it's still out there, but he it looked like he uh, he killed it up there. And then I also bought tickets for when he's playing. Uh, me and my dad are going to P Day Christmas Seven, um, where it's Spos and the Humans with the Flowbots, which is another one you could maybe see a guy like Jarvat or one of the years I think they had like MC Lars, which would have been awesome because I'm a huge fan of Lars. So I'm, I'm excited because it, it's never just those guys every year when I'd see it on Instagram. Um, there were so many other players that would come out. Christina Contigi in front of the show, uh, Cam Groves, Mike Squires, Pimo, all those types of people were, were there. So I'm, I'm curious who the like surprise guests will be. And this is last year they didn't have P-Dank Xmas because of coronavirus. So this is going to be a huge one back. This is supposed to second live show back that I'm going to be at the one in Boston. So I'm so pumped, so pumped. He's got the album coming out. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Like I said, I want to get jar, I want to get Spose on and hopefully the Spose one can align with like the day the album comes out, we could drop that. But uh, so into my gambling picks a little bit on uh, Substack. Um, so last week I kind of killed it. Like low key, not even low key. Like I, I killed it. So I went three and one. The only game that screwed me was Notre Dame plus one and a half at home against uh, the Cincinnati Bearcats. And like the reason I, Cincinnati's legit. I, I underestimated them. I thought they were not a very good team. I was completely wrong, completely wrong. And I can admit that I'm a big, I'm, look, I'm a big man. I can admit that when I'm wrong, you'll, you'll, he- you'll hear me admit it. Um, and I was really getting, before the game, I was getting like heavy UCF vibes, especially with Desmond Ritter's comment, um, when one of the coaches said, hey, Notre Dame's a loud stadium, he was like, oh, it won't be loud for that long. I was getting real UCF vibes um, from them. And maybe and even like Western Michigan vibes, the year PJ Fleck was there, where it's like a flash in the pan kind of cocky team. I was wrong. Um, excuse me. Whew, big yawn. Um, I was completely wrong. Notre Dame loses the game, uh, I believe 24, 13. So that was really my only, that was actually, or not really, it was my only loss of the week. The other ones that hit big for me were BC getting 15 and a half on the road, a fucking disrespectful spread. So disrespectful that BC was, was, was getting 15 and a half. That's just ridiculous. BC should have won this game if uh, Grossel held on to the football. Um, they win this game. They, with a minute left, they're driving on them. They're throwing the ball, hitting out routes, hitting digs over the middle. They're, they're moving the ball, and then he fumbles a snap. Clemson recovers it. They win 19-13 to 13 at home. I, re- I actually predicted Boston College to win this game, um, which another one I'm wrong about that, but granted, we're not taking money line. We're taking the spread. Um, Clemson uh, – BC covers. 
They were getting 15 and a half, lost by six. Other game I took was Penn State getting the shutout at home, 24 nothing over the Indiana Hoosiers. They were giving 12 and a half to the Hoosiers, a team that's wildly overrated and very poor this year. Um, Penix Jr. is not a very good player, a very overrated player that a lot of us thought were going, was going to be a, a real contributor this year. And I'm one of those people. I thought he was going to be a very good player, but uh, I was, com- like I said, completely wrong. Another time, hey, I can admit it. I, I can admit it. I was wrong, but I was not wrong about the Nittany Lions winning. They were giving Indiana 12 and a half. They cover that by, uh, by winning 24 nothing with a big, big time shutout. Um, and then the other game, the Toilet Bowl 1A, um, we got Toilet Bowl 1B uh, coming up this week that, that I'll get into. Um, we had Vanderbilt um, at home against UConn. UConn was getting 14 and a half. Um, they lose by two to an SEC opponent. And I, 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 I get it. It's Vanderbilt. I completely get that. That's a... Uh, uh, a barely SEC school, but give the Huskies the credit they deserve. They're not a very good football team. We all can agree with that. They're pretty, pretty bad, but they went down there. They've been battling. They almost beat an undefeated Wyoming team last week. They lost the past two weeks by a total of four points. So UConn covers, they were getting 14 and a half from Bandy. Tickets I heard were going for about a dollar, about $2 before game, which is outrageous. Um, so that kind of, I want to segue that into my lock of the week for this week. Uh, so you kind of covered my th- three picks hit, uh, you kind of getting 14 and a half Penn state given 12 and a half and BC getting 15 and a half. Um, the one that didn't hit was Notre Dame getting a point and a half at home three and one on the week. I'm up to eight and five on the year. October's looking like a pretty good month. So I'm feeling a little risque. I'm going to go with, uh, some big time games. Well, actually, no, I lied. I'm not going with – it's a mix. It's a very big mix. First, I'll go with my lock of the week, and it's involving the Huskies in Toilet Bowl 1B, uh, UConn versus UMass. 11 losses on the season between these two teams, no wins. But there's a big difference between both of these squads. Um, one of them is clearly a lot better, and that is UConn. UMass is terrible. UMass is just like really, really, really bad. Um, it, it's really pathetic to see how bad this team is. Lost to Pittsburgh, 51 to 7. Lost to BC, 45 28. They had a close one with Eastern Michigan where they lost by 14. Lost to Coastal by 50. Lost to Toledo by 38. Um, UConn's only giving three and a half on the road, which really isn't a road game. Soars to Amherst about an hour bus ride. So I, I take the road element out of it because it's not even a real road game. You're not stepping into an atmosphere like you wouldn't in an SEC school or at a Big Ten school. You're stepping into the UMass atmosphere. All the kids there just want to tailgate and get shit faced before the game. They're not going into the game. So no atmosphere is going to carry into that. There's going to be maybe not even, I don't even think a thousand people at that game. So take that off the board. This is pretty much a neutral site game. I like UConn to win the game, get their first win of the year. Tyler Fomachan is going to play very well in the game. If he's the starter, they've been kind of between him and uh, Steve Cry- Steven Krajewski, um, who kind of swapped in and out. They swapped in and out in the Vandy game. But ooh, another big yawn. Um, but, yeah, I like UConn giving three and a half, winning their first game, and the spread not even really being a factor. That's my lock of the week. Lock it up, hammer it in, do whatever you got to do. That's the lock that's going to hit. My other low-profile game, well, not, this is this is kind of ramping up to the higher games I'm, I'm going to be uh, betting on and giving advice on. I've got Wake Forest traveling to upstate New York to play the Syracuse Orange. Wake Forest giving the Orange six and a half in the, in the dome. Um Wake's ranked this year. Syracuse is very bad. That's pretty much really what it comes down to. The the Wake Forest, the Demon Deeks look they they look like they have a lot of confidence. Um, and Syracuse, you know, they're not a they're not a good team. 
but they're really not a bad team. They beat a good Liberty team with Malik Willis at quarterback. They beat Albany 62-24. It's an FCS uh, team. They lose the Rutgers 17-7, but Rutgers isn't bad this year. And then they lost to Florida State uh, last week, this past Saturday. Not great. Um, Wake just looks real confident. And when you lose to Florida State, man, that Florida State team is brutally bad. Like, they're just not very good this year. This I think that was Florida State's first W of the year. So to give that up is very, very tough. Um, and I really don't think there's going to be a bounce back here for Dino Barber's squad. Uh, so there's that. I, I, like I said, I like Wake. Really, just they're giving a touchdown um, on the road, but their defense looks real good this year. They're ranked, uh, I think they're the, I want to say it. I think the best, ooh. I think they're the best team in the ACC currently. I think right now it goes Wake, NC State, Clemson and Boston College. Um, UNC is completely taking themselves out of the picture. You know, I, I, I still kind of think that BC is better than that Clemson squad. I think they should have won the game. Uh, I think that, if that game's in Boston College, they do win. But, you know, that's that's hypothetical. But I think Wake is the best team in the ACC. I think they're going to win the, the ACC championship game this year. Um, so that's kind of exciting for the, for the Demon Deacons. But yeah, they're going to win this game by more than a touchdown. So hammer that one in too. Wake Forest minus six and a half at the Syracuse Orange. Um, I didn't do an over-under last week. We'll sprinkle one of those in now. High-profile game. The Arkansas Razorbacks are traveling uh, east to go play Ole Miss um, this weekend. So this is what I've kind of tossed and turned on a little bit. Um, over-under for the game is 65 and a half. That would mean both teams would need to score around, I'm no mathematician, around 33. Well, exactly 33 for it to go over, but they need to, it would be, they need to be like a 35 33 game or a 42 35 game. So that's a lot of scoring. But Arkansas's D got thrashed last week by Georgia, giving up 37. I don't think we're dealing with two of America's best, very good defenses. So, like I said, tossed and turned on it. Toiled very hardly. I don't know if that's the correct term, but was uh, very, very, very confused, very nervous on what I would do here. But, yeah, I like the Arkansas Razorbacks at Ole Miss. Hammer the over, 65, 65 and a half points. In the last game, probably the most high-profile game um, current of the Big Ten um, this season and of the week, essentially a pick em. Penn State getting a point and a half at Iowa. Um, that Iowa atmosphere is very tough to play in. A very good O-line anchor by Tyler Linderbaum. Um, Penn State also looks unreal. They look unstoppable and I, I I don't want to call them a lock yet because I right now for the college football playoff I think there's two locks and it's Alabama and Georgia no matter what the wins are no matter what it unless there's two two losses then those guys aren't locks but I think either, both of those teams with one loss make the playoff those are my two locks right now and I'm very close very 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 close to calling Penn State a lock for the playoff which would be awesome to see. I'm a huge James Franklin fan. Um, I think this is what this program needed after a pretty dismal season last year. Um, what one that a lot of Nittany Line fans want to forget about. So I'm close. And this is a huge game. Both top, I think top 10 teams. Let me check the uh, rankings. Let me, uh, I know Penn State's, I think third. Penn's, oh, wow. Um, yeah, no, this game's a lot bigger than I anticipated. I'm a dummy for not uh, hyping it up as much. Iowa's number three, Penn State's number four. Uh, I, I, Penn State plus one and a half on the road. Um, don't think the spread's going to come in. I think it's going to be more than a field goal game. Um, but I think Sean Clifford carries the Nittany Lions and James Franklin over 
a very, very good Iowa Hawkeye team. I mean, this is a matchup we're probably going to see again in the Big Ten championship game, which will decide who makes the, the college football playoff. If they split it, it'll kind of come down to who who won by more, who won, who uh, had a better season with more ranked opponent wins. So that, that that's also a, a huge factor into winning this game. So, but yeah, I do like Penn State plus one and a half on the road heading to Iowa City. I think they play in Iowa City, maybe Des Moines. They head into the state of Iowa. You know what I mean. Um, other news, semi pertaining to college football. Um, a lot of you, if you're big sports fans, know about what is happening with oh, fuck. huge yawns right now. Not good. You know what's happening with Urban Meyer, um, the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach. Um, he had the video missed, a, skipped out on a team flight from Cincinnati um, when the Jags played at, at the Bengals this past Thursday was seen in a bar, um, pretty much finger blasting a girl through her jeans um, and getting grinded up on, taking selfies with people. Um, and, and, and it feels almost a little bit Tom Brenneman-esque where uh, you you know Urban Meyer is either going to A, fake a heart condition like he's done in the past, or B, say that he's a man of God. And I really hope there's not a, uh, a deep drive to uh, right center by Castellanos to make the game four or nothing. I hope he doesn't pull the, the Christian card, but this is a really tough one for uh, Coach Meyer to come back from. Um, a lot of people are upset, especially if Jackson was 4-0, no one would give a shit if that Urban Meyer was getting some in a, a college bar in Ohio. They really wouldn't. It's more that they're 0-4 and that they've lost 19 consecutive games, um, and especially they've lost to a team like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Or Jesus Christ lost to a team like the Cincinnati Bengals, who talent-wise, they're probably in the same in the same stratosphere. Um, so Urban's on the hot seat. I could see that man resigning in two weeks or a week, finding God or getting new heart medication, and then getting a job right out in the Los Angeles area with the University of Southern Cal. Um, you know, I did do my predictions before for who I thought would be the next uh, head coach for the, the USC Trojans. And, you know, there were a lot of names swirling around. I said James Franklin originally, but I mean, the way Penn State's playing, it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Um, I said Jeff Halfley from BC, um, that would be a pretty good fit for them. And I also said Eric Bieniemy, um, the the, Chiefs, the Chiefs offensive coordinator, he's coached in the Pac-10 slash Pac-12 with the Colorado Buffs. He played for Colorado. I mean, there's a lot of other names that swirl around, but the, the guy that I think is going to fill Clay Helton's shoes and hopefully do a lot better than him is Urban Meyer once he uh, gets kicked to the curb in, in Duval because it sounds like the locker room, there's a lot of unrest in the locker room. Ownership doesn't seem like they're very happy with the uh, former Florida and uh, former Ohio State head coach. So congratulations, USC. You have found your new head coach for at least the next three years until he ends up like Sark or Kiffin, um, which is inevitable. So congratulations to the Trojans on getting your new head coach. But uh, brutal look for Urban Meyer and the Jacksonville Jaguars, especially when you're on a 19-game losing tear. Um, you traded away probably the league's best backup, you traded away your former first round corner, not even like a four, not even four years removed, a year removed for a third round pick and a, a mid tier tight end. It, it just, if any team, I mean, we thought the Texans were in shambles. This team looks even worse because Houston, at least, they've got sort of something going on. And people didn't have very high, ex people had no expectations for them. People had some expectations for the Jaguars for Urban Meyer to be with this new young gun quarterback. And I'm not saying Trevor Lawrence is bad, but the expectations were way higher than they should have been. So this Jacksonville, Jacksonville going through all of this right now looks way worse than anything a team like Houston or New York is going through because nobody had expectations for them. There were minor, minuscule, but just more expectations for the Jacksonville Jaguars, which is uh, 
a, a weird statement to make because they're usually it's a team with no expectations around them. Um, but so I'm um, trying to think what, oh, started the new series. A, a lot of this I've written on Substack. So you can go check that out. Remember Substack is articles from the office. Um, I'm writing on there. You know, we may get some more contributing writers on the, uh, on the blog, which would be pretty cool. I'm thinking um, one of the boys, T Mello, I'm going to reach out to him about maybe writing some WWE, just kind of see how it goes, throw some feelers out and see what works. But T Mello and Leo Allgaier, along with possibly a friend of the pod, Hugh Wells, who kind of just hops on as a moderator um, or just hops on to have fun a lot of the time, which I absolutely love. Um, he may be on, he may be on that one also for when the crown jewel happens, which I believe is October 21st as well. So that, and maybe a Spose interview could be together. It would be too, too hard to hit in, uh, interviews of my favorite rapper and then three of my three, three good friends. So, uh, but yeah, they're going to come out for the crown jewel and Roman Reigns wrestles Brock Lesnar. Um, they, they've kind of been talking about it for a while and finally we, we, we see an event where Brock Lesnar is in a guy that the Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns were both former uh, football players. Brock played in the NFL with my Minnesota Vikings during the preseason. And Roman Reigns is a pretty good defensive tackle from uh, Georgia Tech. So stay tuned for that. But back on to the Substack topic. Um, I started Hugh, Hugh, Huey Wells, who I've just brought up. He got me on this thing called, he, he, he called it Alt Rock Autumn. And I, I was like, well, what, did, what do you mean? What, what do you mean by alt rock autumn? And he's like, well, it's the season where you, uh, you listen to grunge music, you listen to alternative rock, and you put on your jeans and your flannel, and you just chill. And I kind of fell in love with the idea of what, when he brought this up, I won't lie. So I, I'm doing alt rock autumn for the whole month of October. Um, and so far, I've got to do my one for, I'm taping this on uh, October 5th tonight. It's a Tuesday night, so I got to do that article um, before I go to bed. But so the past four days, I've just written about a different alt-rock song that kind of I maybe have a connection with or maybe just makes me feel a certain way when the weather's hitting a certain, uh, just just a little different. So the first one I did was uh, I did Today by the Smashing Pumpkins, probably my favorite song by them. Um, and it, it, it's a really weird song when you listen to it because it doesn't, it doesn't sound, it's kind of like semi-charmed life. Cause that's about, um, taking drugs and overdosing and smash it. Uh, today is about a time where Billy Corgan was in a very dark place and was contemplating suicide and he almost, he almost killed himself. So it's a darker song, but you know, it, it, it's one of my favorites. And it just, that felt like the one that needed to kick that October off. I did that for October 1st. It's a great song um, all around, just awesome. Um, so that was the lead off. Then October 2nd, um, it was a perfect day because I had a football, college football game at Westfield State. The weather on the bus drive there was like 62, 65-ish in between that. Um, kickoff was, I think, like 72. A little warmer um, with the sun out on you, but in 72 nonetheless. And the, the one I had was, uh, I did Mr. Jones by Counting Crows. And, you know, I kind of related that back because there was a day um, a couple weekends ago, about maybe about a month and a half ago now, um, me and my friends, we went out to Yukon to visit a couple of their friends and hang out there for a couple of days. And we drove two different cars. It was me, Huey and Mac Brown. And we played this type of music. We had like today's version of alt rock like cage the elephant mixed in with like bruce springsteen and the counting crows and the red hot chili peppers we were playing that type of music with the windows down the weather was perfect we were driving through the back roads of rhode island and connecticut and listening to this type of stuff and th- there's a certain line I, I i specifically wrote about it it's um mr jones and me tell each other fairy tales and that kind of hit hit deep for me when i when i was really reading through the lyrics because we were driving out there. Like you're talking to each other about what you want to do after college. What is your ideal situation? Where do you want to live? Where do you want to work? What do you want to do? And that kind of felt like our fairy tales, like what ship do they want to work on? Where do I want to work after college? Like 
all that type of stuff is our realistic version of fairy tales. And it, it just, those moment, moments like that are ones you don't forget about, ones that you always kind of cherish and remember. And the weather that day just hit different with that type of music playing. So I did that one for October 2nd. October 3rd was a Sunday. I, I actually mentioned this uh, earlier. I did uh, Father of Mine by Everclear. And what's weird about the song is I don't feel like I should relate to it because um, – it, it, it's really about a dad that walks out of his son's life. Um, and Art, Art Alex, Alex, Art Alex, Alex Akis, Art Alex Akis, Jesus, tongue tied there. Um, his dad walked out of his life after they got into like a big fight. Um, and he had witnessed his, his dad put his hands on his mom before. Um, his dad kind of forgot about him um, and, and, and just completely abandoned him. It, like that that never happened to me like nothing even close i have a tremendous relationship with my dad and the way that this hit was i kind of thought i want to cherish these moments that i hang out with him more um so whenever i hear that song i do get a little emotional and that's kind of how that and hey big guy um i suppose relate is it, it's really just talking about a lot about the time alex Akis is talking about time he missed spending with his dad and Spose is talking about times he did spend time with his son. So that's really where the, the I get emotional. And it just, it was a Sunday night. You get emotional. It was the Sunday scaries kicking in. You're really not looking forward to starting your uh, classes back up for the week. Um, you got homework due the next morning. So everything was kind of hitting me at that moment, getting a little emotional. So I had that. And then October 4th, we, it was an absolute downpour monsoon of a day. We practiced for football indoors. So I really thought there was one perfect song for it. And it was 3 a.m. by Matchbox 20, because just some of the lyrics really hit that, that nice light guitar with uh, kind of soft drums in the back was perfect too. But like there's certain lyrics like, uh, and she only sleeps when it's raining. And uh, Thomas, who who's one of the main writers of the song, wrote this about his mother who had cancer when he was uh, very young. Um, but, there's certain lines, like I said, that really just, they stick out when it's raining out. I think of that song. Um, and she, like I said, and she only sleeps when it's raining. Another one is, um, she says it's cold outside. She hands me a raincoat. She's always worried about things like that. And like, I, that I thought of my mom, like always like, Hey, make sure you forget, make sure you bring your jacket, make sure you get that, this and that, make sure you're good. So like, like I said, certain types of weather, um, and certain moments that occur in, in my life trigger a song. So that's kind of how I'm going to do it. When I did the college football countdown, I really was like, all right, I'm going to do this player this day, this player this day. I just started to do that at the beginning of this, but I just figured whatever the weather is, whatever I'm personally feeling that day, um, I'm going to relate it back to a song and write about it um, in that way. So it, it's a fun little thing. I love doing my series um, for, for the Substack. So Stay tuned to that. Subscribe. The subscribers are going up, which is really an awesome thing to see. Something I greatly appreciate. So um, other stuff, many saints in Newark. I've not seen it yet. I want to see it this week. And, you know, I, I, I've been pretty fortunate because a lot of the podcasts I listen to the hosts um, grew up at, or not grew up, but were Sopranos fans when it came out. So obviously they watch those. Uh, they watch many saints in Newark. And they really haven't spoiled it yet. So I, I am fortunate in that sense. But man, the reviews have not been great. So I'm very, I'm very nervous. And you know, I shouldn't have very high expectations because it's so far removed from when the series like actually came out. So but I just heard the acting from like the younger, um, younger Pussy, younger Sill, uh, younger Pauly, um, and especially Gandolfini's kid I heard have not been... Um, very awesome. So uh, just, just kind of leaving it with that. I, I have not seen very much. Um, I've not seen, seen, seen positive reinforcement from uh, people that have seen the movie and some that have seen it um, a few times now. Um, but other than that, I really don't have anything else. So I'm going to kind of wrap the show up. Um, like I said, we're still doing the one episode a week. I, it's tough because I enjoy doing it, but I also need to find time to 
record it and actually give you guys good, good content. So, you know, that that's right now what we got to work with. Once the winter hits, hopefully I'll be back to two, maybe even three times a week. Um, once the content just starts uh, ramping back up and college wrestling will be going. So Brett and I will be back right back to our, our, our normal bullshit um, writing about wrestling and uh, talking about it. Um, one, one quick thing, congrats mentioned him before my teammate, Mac Brown, he was named D three football.com team of the week. Um, D lineman, five tackles, three for loss and a forced fumble. Um, also had his helmet pop off his head about six times, none of which were calling in the Westfield game. We did win that game 16 to eight it was a real, real close one came down to the wire defense clutched up dudes like Andrew Luciano, huge sack at the end. Cole Keefe balled out nine tackles and a sack. Hugh Wells was only marked for like three tackles, but like, we know he had more than that. The, the, the stat sheet's a little, little wacky, but um, we had a huge game coming up versus UMass Dartmouth this weekend. Uh, I believe it's their homecoming. So that would be an awesome thing to uh, go out there and spoil because there's nothing better than hearing like, cause alum come back for a lot of these things um, and, and, and seeing football alum upset that they lose to us and we're only a 30 minute drive away. So it's a little bit of a rivalry game with how close we are. So I'd, I'd love to, to pull a W out of there. Conference play in the MASCAC is very difficult because there's no easy games. Like we beat Fishburg 28, nothing, but there, that was far from an easy game. They, they were, they grinded, and then we hit a very – so we play Worcester – or uh, not Worcester. Play Dartmouth this week. Then we've got Worcester following that. And then we go into a very difficult four-game stretch. I believe it's – I believe it goes at West Con, who looks good this year, home versus Framingham, who I think has a very good shot of winning the conference this year. Um, but I think they're a team that we can we can give a run for – we can give them a run for their money um, at Plymouth state who they don't look great right now on paper, but always a tough team when you have to especially go up there um, in early November, late October. So that's going to definitely be a, a tough game. And then we finish with our, our big rivalry game, the, the Cranberry bowl at home versus the Bridgewater state bears. My freshman year, we lost to them um, off a couple of late touchdowns and just a couple of late mishaps. So, this is definitely one you want to get back, especially for the senior class. You want to go out with a bang and go out with a big W over a team that you really aren't a big fan of, one that you do not like. So, um, you know, I, I, I about five false finished um, about nine times right now. Uh, so here we go one more time. Um, thank you guys for listening to the My Parents Office podcast. Um, social media at My Parents Office, Twitter. TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook page, my parents' office podcast, articles from the office on Substack. But uh, other than that, I do not have anything for you. Video version, um, always up on YouTube. And then um, next week, we'll be back around. Hopefully, I'll have a guest, maybe Brennan Crow and Mac Brown together, do some type of draft to get, get back into the flow of things because it's felt very disjointed doing the pod um, one day a week. Uh, and I do want to stay on top of it. But yeah, thank you guys for listening and stay tuned for more.